Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new machine quilting tutorial. Today I'm outline quilting around all of the heart medallion designs in this beautiful quilt. Outline quilting is the same thing as stitching on a marked line. It's an important technique to learn how to do so you can stitch an exact shape on your quilt. It's also great to do over pretty fabrics, your favorite fabrics, to add emphasis to those shapes and designs that you really like. So it's a really important skill to build and we're gonna do it together using free motion quilting. Let's get started. So I've been working on the outlines of these heart medallions and the first step before you get started quilting is to plan your path. So for this one, I have this really nice circular design. And if you trace your finger around it, you can start to plan how you're going to quilt it. So I think I'm gonna quilt around this flower shape in the center first, then I'll stitch across the light blue area to get to the outer heart shapes. And I think I'm going to stitch around these, kind of working in a figure eight pattern. So I'll go around one time knocking out half of the shapes, and then as I come back to the beginning, then I can knock out the second half going around. I'm not going to stitch around the inner heart shapes for two reasons. Number one, it really doesn't need it. Uh, the batting that I am using in this quilt, this is Quilter's Dream Puff, and it has a really nice fluffy loft. It also has a really high rating, so I don't actually need to do very much quilting beyond the stitching in the ditch that I've already done and outline quilting these motifs. Of course, if you wanted to add more stitching, you could kind of sneak in here and stitch around every single heart shape. You could stitch you know, through that top point or through the bottom point. Now that's totally up to you. You can also break thread to stitch inside each one as well. You know, personally looking at that, you know, you'd have lots of thread breaks. It would be pretty time consuming to do that. But if you really want that effect and that look, that's definitely open to you. For this one in particular, this would have required a lot of thread breaks to stitch around each heart shape. Uh, you know, all of these different echoes and stuff. I used the center lines. I just marked a line right across the center and travel stitched along it in order to reach all of those spaces and to reduce all of those thread breaks. So definitely know that that's open to you. Okay, so now I'm gonna begin in the middle of this block and I'm gonna start on that flower shape. Now to pull up my thread, I just drop my needle down into the machine and bring it all the way back up then give that top thread a th tug and that brings a little loop up to the top. That is your bobbin thread. Tug on it and then tuck both thread tails underneath your foot. Okay, so outline quilting can be a little tricky and it's definitely something that you wanna do slowly, slow and careful. So I'm just making my way around this flower shape and I'm quilting with white thread, but of course you could quilt with a dark blue thread, you could quilt with a light blue thread. You know, whatever you want to stitch, if you want it to blend in and match, or if you wanted to contrast. I like the contrast, I think it's pretty, but of course it's gonna require extra careful stitching so that way I don't veer off. Now if I did veer off, I'd wanna veer off in the direction of the lighter fabric because my white thread kind of blends in with it. I'm gonna try not to veer onto the actual motif shape because that will definitely stand out. You'll definitely be able to see it. But even if I do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It's one of those things. Um, I really created these heart medallions just to make something pretty, something that we could learn a lot with as we quilt them together. But don't let that get you stuck. You know, sometimes whenever we have something really pretty and really special, it's easy to get stuck with it and feel like, you know, the stitching has to be just exactly perfect. And I promise you, it doesn't. <laughs> Some of my blocks have been uh, more or less on the sloppy side, you know, um, whether I'm in a hurry or I'm just, you know, simply not in the mood to be super, super perfect with my quilting. Sometimes I veer away from the, uh, outside the outline of the motif quite a bit. And it's not the end of the world. So don't feel like you have to stop and rip it every time you make a mistake. So I'm coming back around, finishing off the shape. And I do like the idea of kind of the escape hatch, just stitching straight up and connecting with that heart shape. And the reason I like that 
is it's just going to make the whole thing much faster. You know, we're not going to have to do a whole lot of thread breaks to get around this thing. I'm going to go on ahead and tie off and bury this thread tail just so it's out of my way and I'm not distracted by it. So to do this, I just tie those thread tails in a knot and then I grab a cheater needle. This is a special needle that has a little groove in the eye. So I can take the thread tails and very carefully pop them into the eye of the needle and pass them through the middle layer of the quilt. Now I have a more detailed video on that, so definitely check it out. So that way you can see how to do that step by step and um, how to also tie off short thread tails. I cover that in the video as well. Okay, so now we're gonna work around and we're gonna kind of work in a figure eight pattern. So I'm gonna come up and around this heart shape. And I've done a lot of outline quilting around these medallions. So I've kind of memorized the best way to get around them. But of course you haven't. So just take your time and you know, take your finger and trace around it and try and figure out for yourself what is the best method to go around. And it's perfectly fine if you end up having to travel stitch over you know, some previously stitched lines, that's A-OK. -okay. It's not the end of the world and that's absolutely allowed. Sometimes you can't avoid travel stitching. Now, because I did that escape pouch in one position over here, I'm gonna do it every time I come down to that point. And I do that because I want it to look consistent. I don't want one single little escape hatch, you know, stitched from that flower shape out to this little border of heart shapes. I want it to be consistent all the way around so that way it looks like part of the design. And this is another way that you can use little elements like that as part of the design and make it look intentional rather than as, honestly, a slight time-saving cheat. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to come down again, come to that tip, and then just stitch straight to that inner point and then back down again. Very, very quick and simple. Now, when it comes to outline quilting, this is a skill that's really important to build for free motion quilting. I know it's gonna feel pretty challenging. You might be wobbling all over the place as you quilt along this edge. You know, even I'm wobbling a bit. Sometimes I'm stitching a little bit closer in, sometimes a little bit further out, and that's okay. When we're quilting in free motion, we have the full range of movement, which means we can stitch in all different directions. And notice that I'm not rotating this much. I've got the whole quilt kind of in the arm of the machine, so I'm not really rotating much. I am shifting my hands around a bit just so I get in more comfortable positions but I'm really leaving the quilt more or less in one place because it would be challenging to rotate it all the way around just to stitch around a heart shape. So this is a skill that's really important to build and it's one of those things that, you know, basically it's quilting on a marked line and that's really important to know how to do that. And it's also being able to control your stitching. So it's a lot of speed control. It's a lot of control of your hands on the quilt. And it's also, you know, a lot of looking at the quilt and figuring out where you're going next. So I'm right here. And if I stitch down and into that flower shape, basically I'll have completed the entire line of quilting and I'll have to break thread and move over here in order to start the next one. Well, I don't really wanna do that. So instead, I'm gonna stitch down and begin my figure eight quilting back around. I'm gonna basically ignore this top heart. So I'm gonna come down. And I think I forgot <laughs> to do that little straight line stitching on that one. That's okay, you know? Make sure that your quilts look like they're stitched by a human and not by a robot, you know? Uh, I've been listening to a really good book that's about uh, sentient uh, computers and you know it's one of those things like I have to continually remind myself I am not a Bob <laughs> I am not a computer I'm a human being and I make mistakes and sometimes my blocks are inconsistent and sometimes my quilting it has a very human touch to it and that's a good thing you know so don't feel like it has to be absolutely perfect getting back to the skill of this you might be wondering okay well when would we use this type of thing in another style of quilt when we don't have you know something pretty to stitch around like this 
Well, we use this all the time whenever you want to mark a motif on your quilt. Like, let's say you had this design as a stencil and you wanted to mark it on your quilt. That's completely open to you. And then you have to have the skill to be able to stitch on those marked lines, right? So that's an important skill to build for that alone. And it's basically the same thing. I'm stitching on this outline while quilting on a marked line is virtually the exact same thing. Uh, another way that we could use this skill is quilting around the outline of an applique. So we've been doing that a lot this year with the machine quilting block party, quilting around our Dresden plates. You know, that's an important skill to be able to build so that we stitch right along the edge rather than, you know, hopping onto the applique fabric. So coming down, stitching that little tip and back. It's okay if that wobbles a bit, no big deal. So there's a lot of ways that you're going to use outline quilting and it's one of those techniques that I think is absolutely essential. It's the same as quilting on a marked line. It's just one of those uh, tools in your toolbox that you've got to build and then you'll be able to pull it out and use it anytime. And now I'm stitching around that last top heart shape coming down and I'll finish off that last straight line. So there we go. That is how I outline quilted that entire heart medallion. Every single one of these is gonna be a little different. You know, it's gonna be a different plan, a different path. For this one, for example, I would start in the center and stitch around the outline of the heart, come back into the center, stitch around the outline of the next heart. And you could work all the way around that way and then probably the next bet would be to break thread, move to a corner and stitch around that inside curvy border. And then you could use an escape hatch to escape out and then you could do the outline and stitch along it. You know, making sure that you have that little bit of straight line stitching in each of the corners. So that's an idea for quilting this heart medallion as well. And here's what it looks like after I finished stitching in the ditch and outline quilting my heart medallion quilt. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot about outline quilting and free motion quilting, both really terrific skills to build. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please ask in the comments below. I really want to help you learn more about machine quilting. Of course, if you liked the video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. We have new tutorials coming on how to quilt the beautiful border, so you don't want to miss out on those videos. Until next time, let's go quilt.